Yo, what is going on, my fellow weeps? Chrono here, and welcome back to the channel. So today, we're going to be going over, oh god, the faded video. It's been, like, weeks in the making, honestly, and it hasn't even been, like, a huge production situation. It's mostly just been me waiting on information and then testing things after the fact. How strong are the new Rayard weapons, really? We're going to go over their potentials, their use cases, as well as some damage comparisons we'll be taking a look at in the damage calculator. So you guys will get all the information that you need here in one video. It might make it a little bit of a longer video. I'm going to show you guys how I did the damage calculations, not just give you the numbers. If you are just interested in the numbers, I will try to remember to leave a timestamp for those near the end, but I'll also try to make an emphasis on those numbers, those bigger numbers when we get to them. And we'll be doing comparisons to basically everything that people should realistically be using at this point in the game. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new here, hey, I'm Chrono. Thanks for this being the first video of mine you clicked on. It's kind of wild, but uh, I appreciate to subscribe as we work our way towards that 10K mark, hopefully by the end of this year. Either way, let's go ahead and jump into this. All right, to start things off, we'll be over on the Visiphone website now. In case you're ever curious about this whole setup here, let me grab some stuff here. Okay, cool. If you're curious about like where I pull data and information from, it's just the Arcs Visiphone site. And scroll right on down. Usually it's not this big. I'm making this big for videos. But uh, scroll on down and just look for your individual weapon. We're going to go with Soaring Blades, as that's what I primarily play. Can scroll right on down until we see our Rayard weapon, which you can see is right here. We've got base damage is actually pretty solid at 1098. Um, I don't know why. Hold a thought here for a sec. All right, had to double check because something looked a little bit off, but yeah, this is actually incorrect. This is supposed to be 1094, not 1031. Uh, this, I believe, was the maximum when we were at level 70, maybe. Um, the other way, 80 is higher. It looks like it just hasn't been updated for Soaring Blades. You guys can see here if we go to something like, uh, I believe, Twin Daggers. Sure. Soaring Blades' little cousin. You can see it's 1094. So, yeah. Uh, base damage wise, they're not super far apart. The biggest difference in these two weapons is going to be the potentials that are available for them. So, with Fugal Guard, you've got 37% uh, potency across the board. And then you get a buff for 120 seconds after using a Photon Blast. Uh, there's, I believe, three buffs in the third. It's always kind of like in the same order, from what I understand. It's not like a random buff, but like essentially the third buff is the buff that you're actually going after the most important one. Uh, so if you're in a party, these are fantastic. People popping their photon blast, they can pop them, you know, right one after the other um, to keep the buff stacking up on top of each other. So as long as you've got that super cool here, um, Rayard does come out a little bit stronger. And the reason it comes out a bit stronger is, yes, 35 or 36 percent potency. Not too bad. But you also get an extra 5 percent on top of that. For any PAs or techs. Now, most classes, I say most classes, are going to be heavily reliant on their PAs and techs. However, classes that do have other sources of damage, we're thinking about things like, actually, I don't think compound techs count as techs, as weird as that sounds. I'm not 100% sure that's the case, if I remember correctly, from the, uh, from the force interview. And of course, your normal attacks, things like that, aren't going to count as your PAs. So, classes that have a lot of reliance on those are going to see a little less than that 5% overall, while that PP consumption is higher by about 10%. Now, you could argue that, hey, look, that makes it not worth it for me. I'm going to stick the Fugal Guard versus Rayard, but then we're going to look at the exact numbers. It's kind of hard to, to uh, parse in a vacuum because realistically speaking, like not every class is the same. It's going to be more useful than others. Like for me, for example, on Bouncer, my PA has hit like a free train. It's a very big part of how much damage I actually deal uh, consistently. Granted, it's not pinion. It's not um, it's not my blade to shoot off on the side. It's all my PAs and my PAs are what build my pinion and my pinions will help me get more PAs. So it's kind of like a, a really, really nice circle. But you get the idea. It's going to be better for some classes, not better for others. Overall, it is still going to be very good. These weapons are going to be very, very close and they actually feel their own niches, in my personal opinion, uh, based on how you're going to be using them moving forward. We pull up the Ray Arden. If you're curious, like, oh, how do I get my Rayard? How difficult is it to build? So on and so forth. You can get your Rayard by trading in Icicle Cubes, Icicle Orbs, and then Icicle Cubes. I'm sorry, Icicle Cube 2s. Icicle Orbs and then Icicle Cubes. These, you all get, you get all of these from just going into the Gorge in uh, Kavaris after the update. Super simple. You just kill veterans, you kill um, Gigas, you kill the Recons, and then you kill the Ancients. And just take them down in a huge group that's not crashing anymore for people. So in case you're curious about that, the crashes have been taken care of because it looks like they were caused by the um, the new thing that they added in. It's unfortunate because that thing was super cool, in my opinion. 
um, but they added in the torches and it looks like the torches were causing the crashes. So they've axed the torches for now. Unfortunate because that was one of my favorite parts of the gorge because it made you do a lot more damage in the gorge actually because it added an extra fire hit on top of everything else you were doing, which was super cool. And it made it so you didn't need to have to worry about the uh, those items like the 100% uh, the defros and or the cold resistance items. You don't have to worry about those because as long as you had the buff, you were good to go. So sucks they're not there anymore, but I digress. Hopefully they show back up again fairly soon. Anyway, making your weapon super simple, super easy. Go ahead and make your weapon. You're good to go. Just farm out the gorge until you get what you need. You may get a drop because the weapons are dropping from ancients and some of the enemies out there. Um, but some people aren't that lucky. At the very least, you can go ahead and get your weapon. If you do happen to get a drop and think, what am I supposed to do with this? What am I going to do with this? That's now fodder for making fixes and upgrading fixes. So as annoying as it is, that is the way that you're going to be working on that process. So keep that in mind moving forward. However, do keep in mind that if you do put a fix on this, you don't get the fix that you want. You then need to make another weapon and then add a fix to that weapon and then hope that gives you the fix you want to then transfer it over. Current time of making this video, there is not a way to overwrite a level one fixer. So if you get unlucky with a crap fixer, unfortunately, you're just gonna have to make another weapon and then transfer that system over. It does suck. It is dumb. Hopefully that does get changed or you can just overwrite the fix of level one. I don't know why it isn't a thing, at least up until now, it has been super big of an issue. Um, but I personally think it's a pretty big problem that needs to be addressed seeing as they just recently made it so you could uh you could get all the different fixes meaning the pool of fixes that you want has now been um drastically increased as opposed to what it previously was before the fix of changes so and in case you're curious what fix should i get on my rayard weapon uh if you're a slayer termina if you're a anything but a slayer fatal is, is basically the, the long and short of it that's what you're looking for if you're looking for um specific situations uh Wix versus Unwix. Um, Wix is pretty solid for Rangers and what's the other one for forces. Unwix is only good if you're not one of those classes and you're specifically fighting an enemy that will never have a weak spot. Things like uh, Bujin and what's the other one? Uh, Alcundo. So keep that in mind for your weapons if you're making like multiples. Maybe you're setting yourself up for speed running. This is going to be much nicer for speed runs because you can build multiple weapons. It's not too difficult to do. It's going to take some time, don't get me wrong. It's going to take a while for you to get the fixes built up as well if you don't just get lucky, but it is definitely something worth building into overall. Now, I'm going to jump over to the actual damage calculations. All right, for you guys, it was a split second. For me, it's been a couple of days. Turns out I had the wrong link for the damage calculator. I was sitting here trying to figure out what I was going to do, and uh, it's like we have a damage calculator version 3. And this thing has seen quite the glow up. So shout outs to Cake for working on this. It looks absolutely amazing. We're going to go over this in more detail in a separate video, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the Rayard weapon, and I'm going to show you guys how we're going to use this to go ahead and do some comparisons for us so you guys can see why you should build this weapon and why it is actually very good to have, have access to. So because of the recent event, a lot of people are going to have Vershmelt's weapons, probably a Termina 5 Vershmelt's thing this calculator actually does for us is we can do a replacement. So whenever we're talking about virtual melts, this isn't max potency, by the way, I changed this. Um, when we're talking about virtual melts, it's going to swap out the augments that it's using right now in the corner. I'm going to show you in a moment for these augments instead for the weapon and the armor. I'm also going to swap out the subclass for something like Tector. Really it doesn't matter what the subclass actually is when you're really thinking about it. Um, I just have a set detector that way it doesn't do any sort of weird calculations or any sort of weird mix ups or anything along those lines. So when we're talking about burst melts, it's going to use subclass Tector, um, and it's going to use these augments on the weapon and the armor for the calculation. As far as what we're using for the weapon and armor, it's gonna be the same thing across the board for everything. We have the new NEO armor, which is a 5.5% potency. Very, very nice. We're gonna talk about why you should definitely build those um, and how, how easy it is to uh, get damage increases right now. And then we now have a setup that everyone should have access to. So this is all LC augments, with a tribable too. Very, very simple. Everything is dropping these LC augments. So just playing right now will get you this setup very easily. And tribable two is not expensive. At least pretty sure it's not. Last I checked it wasn't, but don't quote me on that. Um, very, very simple. Worst case scenario, just toss in like a stat two or sat four or something like that in this slot. It's basically the same thing. It's just 3% potency. Very, very simple. But everyone should have access to these LC augments. This is what we're going to be using. This is our new baseline. Of course, as time goes on, you replace LCs with the official versions, replace your half finale LC with your Lux, replace your high L dominant LC with, you know, your 
high Kavar Domina if you can. Whatever it happens to be, this is just our baseline that everyone should have access to. So we can kind of see a decent comparison at, you know, a decent level. Those at higher, if you guys want to see how much it's going to change, feel free to pop into this damage calculator and then make these adjustments yourself. I'm going to leave a link to it that way you guys will be able to. So let's pop over to the actual DPS comparison page. So the reason why I'm doing this this way instead of just throwing numbers at you guys is you can see in real time the comparisons that we're doing here. You can also check for other weapons that we may not be talking about. Now, our baseline is just a base flugel guard, no fix or anything along those lines. And I'm also going to have an asterisk up here for a Termina 5 a Versh Melts weapon. And the reason for that is because of the recent event, a lot of people are actually running a Termina 5 Versh, seeing as it was pretty easy to build up. Um, and Termina recently got a buff, which is actually pretty awesome. So Termina 5 Versh is actually looking pretty sweet. You're probably looking at this and thinking, hey man, a base flugel guard is weaker than a Termina 5 Versh. There's some funky things happening in these calculations. One thing to keep in mind is that everything is getting Flugel Guards buffs right now. Um, so this is a comparison if like you're using a Versh in a group with a Flugel Guard, which I don't know if that really matters that much. I think Flugel Guard gives you a crit chance buff, not a crit damage one. So not really big deal. It's a very complicated way of saying realistically that this damage difference is not nearly as big as you one may think. Um, realistically, it's about between within a percent of each other in actual real time testing and use. Um, keep in mind also the augment setup is weighted a little heavier in versus um, in versus uh, potential just because it also has the added benefit of not needing to worry about potency floor. Maybe you're gonna end up getting a bit more potency overall. So if you are on a bit more of a budget, you know, running with a verse was kind of your better choice over going with Flugel Guard. We're going to talk about why Flugel Guard wasn't a bad choice either. Um, it was totally fine. So looking at the comparisons right now, these two are actually a lot closer than they look. Don't worry too much about that. It is, you know, it's, it's a little it's a decent little chunk, but it's not that big of a deal. What we're looking at is Rayar and Rayar's comparison, right? So when we're looking at Rayar, we're looking at Rayar at 50, 65 and 100 percent. And now we know that when you're talking about PA damage, it does get a bit of a bump, right? So this is 50 percent of the damage is, um, is PAs. 65% of the damage is PAs or 100%, I'm sorry, or 80% of the damage is PAs. Now, I don't know of a class that only 50% of its damage is PAs. I feel like a lot more of the class's damage are weighted towards PAs. So I feel like what you're going to end up running into is closer to like 80%. 65 is like a decent mid ground, but I feel like 80% is going to be more of what you're going to see in a lot of cases. So it's going to be specific to your class. Maybe check your class discord. Maybe check with some other people that play the class very well. I'll ask around, but go with your best judgment. But if we're looking at just at 50%, it's already over the baseline Flugel Guard, right? And as we get higher, of course, we only get more damage. But you're probably thinking that's that's not very much. It's baseline Flugel Guard. It's only 2%. Like, hey, man, look at that verse. That verse sitting at 4.25. Well, here's the thing. Getting Fixa 1 on anything is pretty easy nowadays. The reason I say that is because you can get a trade in that gives you a guaranteed fixa on your weapon, a fixa one. Now, it isn't a guaranteed good fixa. You can end up like me with Unwix as the fixa that you get. But realistically speaking, it is essentially free. It's not very expensive to do, pretty easy to get a hold of. Uh, and though it is a bit of an annoying system right now, since you can't overwrite the fixa, hopefully that changes in the near future. Um, you can get a hold of a fix on your weapon, meaning you are going to be at this line here as opposed to this baseline. That's why I said, don't worry too much about this here. I know it, it looked a little bit rough. Don't worry too much about it. So what you're looking at mostly is this line here, this line and this line. And as you can see, when we're looking at Fatal, our better setup. We're already starting out ahead of everything else. So we're looking at about a 2% difference between a 50% use of your PAs and the base Flugel Guard, upwards of a 3% difference if we're looking at 80% of our damage coming from PAs. That is pretty massive. You're probably thinking, hey, that's only 3%. Well, one, the small percentages actually do make a pretty massive difference in PSO2. Um, NGS, you'll find a lot of things are multiplicative, so those damage percentages do add up and they do make a difference. However, that's not the end of the story. Let's take a look at higher up. So when we're going into higher level fixes, you can see we're at 15.5% on 80%. It lowest 
thing about this is that this is at fix a fatale one. You're going to get a lot of rares if you're just grinding the current content and you can't sell them, meaning you're going to build up your fixes eventually. So to start out, you're already sitting fairly comfortable. I mean, look at something like Malik with crit plus, dude. Malik with crit plus on a Termina is 8%. That's pretty massive, right? Like it's pretty insane. Assuming, of course, you're getting the max out of this. This is really good. And that is already 2% behind a fix a fatale one. Like, look at the comparison. This is this is the max. This is the cap. It can't get any higher than this. Already 2% behind. And that's where you start, right? So I know it doesn't look amazing to begin with, but over time, you're going to build these up. You're going to be in a situation if you honestly think about how many times you guys had access to a verse that was like a verse two, a verse three or a verse four. And you're like, what am I supposed to do with this thing? Well, now you have something to do with it. You're building up your actual fixa on a weapon that's really good. It's actually a very strong weapon overall. And it's going to be usable for quite some time. And you can't do anything else with it. You can't trade them in. You can't sell them. So it's just going to be something you build up over time. So should you make a Rayard weapon? How strong are they really? Comparatively, when you're looking at a Flugelgard versus like a Termina or a Termina Versh going into like a Rayar, about a two to three percent difference, roughly, right? Two to three, maybe four percent difference, depending upon your situation. Now, that's only to start. Over time, you're going to build this weapon up. You're going to get upwards of like a 10% difference, if not a 15% difference at the higher ends. And that is going to be massive. Hopefully that explains this in depth enough for you guys. I wanted to show the chart that way you can make your own comparisons. So you have situations like, you know, Malik Crit Plus. You have situations like Tissa Incandescent with Fatal. You have Tissa or you have uh, Tissa with 4% max power, you know, all, all these different situations. You can do comparisons and you can take a look at yourself. Maybe you're an Argenti homie. Maybe you haven't you know, got into the actual building up of your weapons. You can now see the differences in the comparisons on your end. Maybe you don't have to worry about going through this yourself. Maybe you're not really good with spreadsheets. Either way, I'll leave a link. You guys can go ahead and build this up on your own and see what the comparisons are with your gear. This does change based on your augments. Keep that in mind. You've got more potency floor versus more potency. It's going to adjust the numbers accordingly. So I would recommend you check this out, plug in your numbers and see what the comparisons are for you. Again, hope this helps out. Do all the YouTube things. It helps out a bunch. Even if you don't know what to comment, just commenting algorithm helps out. So that'd be super cool to see those comments pop up at the very bottom. I'll do my absolute best to go ahead and read through all the comments. I mean, answer them all. I do read all my comments. So just keep that in mind. If you have any questions, feel free to toss them in the comments below. Either jump into Discord and DM me or just say something in Discord in general. People are usually pretty cool about answering questions there as well. The community is super awesome. So I do appreciate you guys that take the time to go ahead and try to help out others around you. It is amazing to read whenever I, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, just check it through my Discord. I'm really bad at ending videos, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it there. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, my friends. Peace out.